He was one of the very last Africans to be taken into slavery in the United States, and the only known African Muslim to have left an autobiography in Arabic about his years in captivity while he was still a slave. In 1807, Omar ibn Said, a 37-year-old Muslim scholar, was captured by an invading African army in Senegal and sold to slave traders. He was taken from his village in Futatoro to St. Louis Port, where he was sold into slavery. St. Louis is an island at the mouth of the Senegal River that played an important role in the transit of slaves from African countries to the Americas and the Caribbean. This region was one of the main sectors of the so-called triangular trade, which consisted of Europeans coming to West Africa to exchange manufactured goods, like textiles and weapons, in return for slaves. Then the enslaved Africans were loaded onto boats and taken to the Americas, after which the boats would return back to Europe loaded with raw materials like sugar, tobacco and cotton. These transatlantic crossings saw at least 10 to 12 million people being transported to the Americas as slaves from the 16th to the 19th centuries. Only the stories of a few have been preserved and Ibn Sayyid's is one of them. Ibn Sayyid was taken into slavery in 1807, a year before the abolishment of the slave trade took effect in the US, and died in 1864, just one year before slavery was finally abolished. His story has come to prominence 150 years after his death, when his memoir was added to the US Library of Congress in 2017. Before Ibn Sayyid's abduction, he was an intellectual, who spent more than two decades of his life studying the Quran and other subjects in his home country. Throughout 15 handwritten pages, Ibn Said's memoir challenges the historical slave narrative about African traditions and culture. His memoir begins with a chapter from the Quran, Surah Al-Mulk, with the verses speaking about dominion, sovereignty or ownership, and the conveying of an overarching message that only God has ownership of creation. The verses, according to experts, could be understood as a message to the slave owners and slave culture prevalent at the time. Then Ibn Said proceeds to tell his own story. My name is Umar Ibn Said. My birthplace was Futa Toro, between the two rivers. I sought knowledge under the instruction of a sheikh called Muhammad Said, my own brother Sheikh Suleiman Kembe, and Sheikh Gabriel Abdal. I continued my studies 25 years and then returned to my home where I remained for six years. Then there came to our place a large army who killed many men and took me and brought me to the great sea and sold me into the hands of the Christians who bound me, sent me on a board, a great ship and we sailed upon the great sea a month and a half when we came to a place called Charleston in the Christian language. There they sold me to a small, weak and wicked man called Johnson, a complete infidel who had no fear of God at all. Ibn Said eventually ran away from his first owner in Charleston, South Carolina, to Fayetteville, North Carolina, before he was arrested and sold again. But this time, according to his memoir, his new owner, James Owen, was different. Historians who studied Ibn Said's memoir and other documents are of the opinion that Ibn Said spent the rest of his life with the Owen family, who were affiliated with the American Colonization Society, a group that was formed in 1817 to send free African Americans to Africa as an alternative to emancipation in the United States. The group sent thousands of Africans to Liberia. We, the northern abolitionists and the southern slave plantation owners, there was a middle way, as they called it, and that middle way was colonization, namely convincing as many slave owners to release slaves or buying them and then sending them to Liberia. And those particular people were not universally, it seems, interested in all slaves. They were particularly drawn to men of culture and education, like Omar was. Ibn Said's skills and intellect made him a well-known person in the entourage. And when he died, a local newspaper published an obituary praising him as a pious Christian, which was unusual in 19th century America. Which takes us to another point that makes Ibn Said's memoir remarkable. Although Ibn Said wrote in his memoir that he converted to Christianity, experts analyzing his memoir say otherwise. It's one of the things that uh a number of Muslims did, you know, that's pseudo-conversion. In some countries, they were just forced, uh, and they exterior, externally, if you will, conform to that. Um, and then, you know, they actually remain Muslims. 
the fact that he was that the opacity of his narrative uh, when he opens it, for example, by a particular uh, surah from the Quran that seemed to be to be included as a kind of a message, a hidden message that his owners had no right over him, uh, that uh, the possession and power all in years in the hands of God, that this seemed to be to kind of go against the narrative of his uh, of his uh, conversion, uh, right, or of his uh, slavery itself. But whether his conversion was real or was a facade for protection like many enslaved Africans in the 19th century, Ibn Said's memoir stands as an important document for the history and narrative of African heritage in the United States. The whole operation of the slave trade depended upon willfully neglecting the origins of enslavement. And that's one of the reasons why a text like Omar's is so important because it recovers that suppressed history. I mean, slavery is a silencer. It denies the voices of uh, captive Africans and enslaved people in the Americas. So recovering this text is so important to getting that history back and understanding the lies and violence that were really at the root of the Atlantic slave trade. 